and declarations of interest. Do any colleagues wish to declare any interest? Please say so now. Could you please put your microphone on? Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. I apologise. Uh, so, item one is declarations of interest. Any declarations of interest? Phil. So on to item four, which is the, um, the well, it's, it's one of the key items on our agenda today, the Sustainability and Transformation Plan and Healthy Rural Local Delivery Services Plan. Now, John, the big one is going to take us through this. John has to go to another meeting um, um, over in Liverpool after, after he's done this item, so he will disappear at that point, but um, John, you can take us through this. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I'll take, take it that members have had an opportunity to uh, read the report um, so I'll try to keep it as succinct as possible. Um, and I know there's a great deal of interest in sustainability and transformational planning because that's been undertaken at a Cheshire and Merseyside uh, level and there are various planning footprints within Cheshire and Merseyside including the Liverpool City region, uh, including alliances that are being formed uh, across the Cheshire and Merseyside that reflect patient flows of activity. So I know it's of significant interest. Um, the purpose of me here today is to tell you about what we're doing on Wirral um, and how the Wirral plan will inform the Cheshire and Merseyside <coughs> plan. Um, and we have tried to make some sense of the plethora of NHS planning guidance which has come out since October of last year. Um, in terms of planning, in terms of the five-year forward view for uh, the National Health Service, we've had a five-year forward view for mental health services that Sheena Kaminsky presented at our last meeting. And we've had a five-year forward view now for primary care services. Um, I'm trying to make sense of all of these five-year forward views and pick out the component parts and how they apply to us and we're all going to be quite a challenge. I'm also really cognizant of the fact that we have priorities for us in terms of our public health and priorities in terms of our adult and child social services and our care setting. And I don't think we've ever had really an integrated plan that pulls all those into a place that actually has a, a degree of cohesion between us and, and that's been the purpose of this exercise. Um, so what we've done is we've looked at the various priorities across rural in terms of health, social care, public health. And we've had conversations with our local medical committee, with Health Watch, with our voluntary sector, with the public, because we held a lot of events in January and associated with our Vanguard programme. And so we've taken all that information and we've replicated what I think has been a fantastic piece of work um, that Rose has led, Rose, Rose has led in 
terms of supporting the Rural 2020 plan. And so what we've developed is this, uh, some people call this trivial pursuit circles, I like to call it three footballs, but maybe not after the Euros. But we've come up with a graphic that describes three, three particular lines of inquiry that we're calling better health, better care, and better value. Better health, better care, and better value. And the component parts of those three uh, circles, i.e. that each of the segments are going to have a chief executive sponsor, much in the same way as we rolled out the 2020 plan. Because I think that piece of work has been uh, something that we ought to emulate because I think it's been so good. And so we're in a way copying the approach but while the 2020 plan talks about people, the environment, and the business, uh, uh, the people, business, and the environment, what we need to focus on in terms of the health offer are things like seven day primary care services, 62 day cancer waits. Um, but clearly there's a, a direct read across between particularly the people circle within our 2020 plan and the whole health and wellbeing agenda, particularly the wider determinants of ill health. And so this section here on promoting healthy eating, life expectancy, children and young families, you as a health and wellbeing board will be totally familiar with. The elements of the better care uh, circles talk about improving quality of care in nursing homes, looking at core standards and trying to improve quality of care right across our sector, but also looking at the three priorities that we believe are the most important for Wirral at the moment, which is improving end of life care, looking at urgent care, and looking at mental health services. And we can't do that without trying to transform the offer to people in terms of community services and primary care. So they're the core components of the better care uh, circle. And the better value uh, circle talks about how we maximise and, yes, reduce and we, uh, deliver savings across a number of key items because there is a limited resource and we have to live within that resource. So we're trying to explore ways of being uh, more efficient. If you take those three circles and map them across uh, with uh, the better health, better care, better value again on the left hand side, I've provided you with, a, in a sense, a patchwork. But the patchwork is really important because it I, identifies, through this colour code here, identifies where the priorities came from. So you can see here that these might be World 2020 priorities, and particularly around the better health, you can see on this graphic that there are direct read across into that, those components. But there's also a read across for public health priorities, adult social care priorities, and other social care priorities. It's also colour coded so that we can look at whether this is an issue for us on Wirral or whether this is an issue for Cheshire and Merseyside. And so when the Cheshire and Merseyside SDB is finally written, I would expect to be able to see some of these themes in the Cheshire and Merseyside Strategic Transformation Plan. And the five areas that we expect to see in the Cheshire and Merseyside SDP Plan are things like improving primary and community care, reducing unwanted variation in care, because we know that variation is not good for patients and it costs us a lot of money and there are poor outcomes. We also are seeking to explore accountable care uh, which is very much uh, a flavour of the day, but is a mechanism by which we believe there are opportunities to integrate services in a much more effective way so as to reduce demand in the future. Um, the fourth area is looking at how providers collaborate closer together. Uh, and fifthly is about um, ensuring that uh, we, uh, well, I'll talk about reducing the, the variation ensuring that uh, CCGs begin to collaborate with each other. So they're the five big topic areas that we would expect to see in the Cheshire and Merseyside plan, but they're derived from, from our local plan. So in other words, this isn't a top-down plan, but this is a bottom-up plan. Um, and I hope that graphic there with the various colours, whilst it's complicated, I hope that's helpful to explain. 
Level one on the paper describes care provided for and delivered in Wirral for Wirral residents in our neighbourhoods and in our communities. Level two would be where Wirral needs to cooperate with other systems. And that system would be Cheshire and Wirral because 9% of our patients flow into Chester and about 14% of Chester residents will flow into Wirral. For reference, about 4% of Wirral residents go to Liverpool for specialised services as well. And the ones that are colour coded in yellow refer to those that we think we need to operate across a bigger footprint than just Wirral. And those that are in orange or mustard are those at level 3 that will be Cheshire and Merseyside wide. So hopefully that explains the various levels of care and the benefit that can be made at scale and where that will be. I'm sorry that's quite a complicated graphic, but it comes back to this core approach from now that we're going to be looking to adopt um, and it very much like your consideration, which is better health, better care and better value. We can't underestimate that these underpinning strategies need to be in place. And we've done a great deal of work with our Vanguard, which will be part of this program in terms of insight and engagement. We'll absolutely be using the insight work that Fiona's done and Julie's done and Rose has done around the World 2020 plan. So whilst this is a, a, a new plan, and it's a plan that we believe um, will sustain us for the next five years, whilst this is another plan that is totally cognizant and interrelated with some elements of the Real 2020 plan, which has that read across for health and well-being. So the purpose of bringing it today really is to share that with you, note that it's been co-produced. I'd like it to be considered uh, formally by the Health and Wellbeing Board as our local plan. And just note that there are five areas in this that will be lifted into the Cheshire and Merseyside strategic or sustainability and transformation. Okay, thanks John. Okay, so I'll open up to comments, questions, contributions. Oh, I'll touch on the matter of yes. Uh, I think the first thing is to I'd be grateful that the STP stuff was really in the mail around about last November, December, and we've given so many months to get on with it. So the easiest, I would probably chuck at this, but if I think about these three circles as three ducks. There's an awful lot of paddling going on underneath, which I need to get my head around. So I need to congratulate people who've slogged away at this for many months to try and get into form that laymen can understand. But I think what I'm anxious is that there's ownership across the professionals. In my head is the word tariff, which may not be appropriate. But essentially, services have tariffs and costs associated with them. People are looking at these and looking at what it costs us to do things. I'm interested in how it's actually going to work with people not having a fight over recharging each other, but how it's going to work on the ground, how this sort of coming together will operate without people falling over the cost to each other and arguing about it and getting bogged down. I'm sorry, that's a very general comment. It's the only way I can come to understand it, Chair. John, do you want to respond to that? I'll try. I'm not sure what the question is to be. Um, what, what we have done this year is trying to move away from tariffs um, and we've established what we call financial envelopes which is an incentive or a, a way of trying to ensure that people work together rather than seek income at the disadvantage of another part of the system and so that's what we've already established this year um, and I would hope that we were able to continue to develop that as we go forward. So there is no longer on Wirral a payment by results system whereby one part of the system benefits by doing more work, but another part of the system really needs less people to be seen, but another part of the system's incentive is to, do, to see more people. So actually creating this framework is aligning culture and change and leadership as much as anything 
comes to the system, not to one part of the system.
where they talked about the changing role of pharmacies, community pharmacies, and wanted uh, to try and introduce more work by pharmacists in doctors' practices and more work by pharmacists in care homes and other locations. But coupled with that, there was a suggested reduction in the amount of the way in which the government supported community pharmacies. And there was some comment in the document about how, how the numbers of pharmacies across the nation had grown from, say, 9,500 to 11,000 or so in a few years. And the comments about uh, not so much duplication, but short distances between them. That was followed by the Department of Health producing stakeholder brief, stakeholder briefing sessions that went over the ground that I've just discussed. And I followed then a debate in the Commons on the 24th of May, which Alistair Bird responded to at that time. I have no idea whether it will be in the post later this week, but there was. Uh, comments, questions and answers in the Commons around about the 5th of July on community pharmacies as well. So it's clear that there was a savings target being made. There was a time scale for it which was suggested to achieve as much as possible <coughs> this October. And the work of doing this was then farmed, it's not a pub, farmed out to um, various people to look at in detail. And I think it would fall to us to consider how the um, strategy would not be, be developed locally. I did take this to council by way of motion, and councillors asked the people scrutiny committee to do some looking into it, and it would be helpful to know how um, this work might fit in with what Mr. Devlin and his team are doing, and how it might fit in with what uh, NHS England have in mind. Um, changes might impact on particular communities. Uh, we've been used to seeing chemists in high streets and the competition which I call the big boys opening up and other people in the leads of places trying to do it by email and other services that tend to eat into the work of local pharmacies that advice the community. So I wanted to find out if there was a strategy being prepared locally. Okay, so thanks for the question. So I think um, the I'm not quite sure what we call it, the three circles, the better health, better care, better value circle, has a particular segment about primary and community care transformation. And if you, if you dig into that segment, there is a piece of work on a pharmacy strategy, actually a dental strategy, and an optometry strategy. And none of those are commissioned by the CCG, they're all commissioned by NHS England. But that's not to say that when I've engaged with those groups and they have been part of producing the triple aim circles that are presented today, that there isn't a desire from those groups to say, um, what is the state of our pharmacy service today? What will it look like in five years' time? What are the gaps between now and then? And what are, will the priorities be, in our view as pharmacists, in order to be able to transform community and primary care services. And in so doing, um, what I'm doing is challenging our local pharmacists to come up with that plan with us, not in isolation. Acknowledging that they have guidance, in the documents you referred to, and there will be planning being undertaken by NHS England as well, as the commissioner of those services. I'm actually asking the frontline people, and I'm asking the dentists, what do you think it will look like for rural? And I think that will help NHS England to say, well, again, we've got a bottom-up strategy rather than a top-down strategy. So at the moment, there isn't one for um, those three services that I've mentioned particularly. But each of those services, through their representation on the local representative committee, so we have a committee that meets from the local medical council, the local dentist, local optometry and pharmacy councils come together as the local representative committee. And I, I go to that committee and I've shared this approach and the approach that we've undertaken in terms of the gap analysis that I've just described. And they really welcome that because they believe that has strengthened their sort of collective view about
our triple aim. And I think that if a council cares to work properly, then those services would be commissioned by us on the road. And that's what we'd be asking for in the future. At the moment, they're not commissioned by us, but by NHS England. Does that answer your question? So, um, as you're aware, there's been um, a large consultation exercise taking place, and that ran from December through to March, um, which is probably where I would put the vote that there will be workshops and so on that you um, picked up on um, have um, been generated by. When that consultation closed, that's been subsequently some areas of debate and the reports that have just come out around um, what the future might look like. Um, there is nationally a requirement to um, seek some efficiencies around pharmacy um, investment nationally by NHS England, but that, that hasn't translated through to any kind of, um, that's not translated through in any budgetary way through to NHS England local offices. And at this moment in time, um, the NHS England offices that are responsible for commissioning pharmacy services along with the other primary care services that um, John's just alluded to are working closely both with local um, CCGs and with the local pharmacy networks, for example, because in addition to the, um, the, 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 the formal um, representative organisations such as the um, um, local pharmacy council, there's also um, um, local networks that were set up alongside CCGs to help develop um, the pharmacy strategy, for example. Um, and that, that, that group has been very, very engaged um, in terms of how we have looked to develop pharmacy services locally over the last couple of years. And that work's continuing. So at the moment, it's a work in progress um, with lots of room for debate and discussion, um, both around how services might need to be developed locally in line with CCGs and in line with the local delivery plans um, supporting the strategic, uh, the sustainability and transformation plan. Um, and there's also um, work ongoing in terms of what that might mean um, in terms of a clearer mandate from NHS England centrally. So it's very much a work in progress. Thank you. Okay, thanks. to perhaps uh, go 